Hello guys. How are you doing? This is our August pattern of the month, and we. I also have some kits left for Patreon. I made two versions of kit this time. I, I usually make a box with the full kit inside, all the stuff, and um, but this time I decided to make a smaller version just um, fabric plus threads and there are 22 colors this time uh, full skeins of thread a little instruction inside and uh, it also has um, the main fabric with pattern transferred on it using hidden erasable pen this one my favorite and um, one more fabric to stabilize it uh, when you're stitching for your convenience if you like it you can uh, stitch on both fabrics or stitch on one fabric only it's up to you and i also made those cute cards uh, which i put in every my pattern kit and this time we are stitching um this beautiful bird so i decided to make um those cute cards and I hope I can make your mood a little bit uh, <laughs> better when you receive it so um, and I hope you will smile and um, you can also choose fabric uh, which you uh, want to go with there are three options and um, yellow uh, which I will be stitching on and there is also green fabric and there's also blue fabric, only one kit with blue fabric left and there are some green and uh, yellow. So if you want to join uh, right now, you can uh, join and uh, mini kits are available. There are a few mini kits, like uh, 11 of them or something and I will ship it right away. I don't know if this uh, kit will be available on Etsy. so. Um, so this is a limited edition and basically on Etsy will be only patterns, digital patterns soon. Um, I will try to move from physical items to, to digital only in order to learn something and be able to develop my skills and etc. And if you are subscribed to, on my Patreon for pattern this month, you will get um, three options and you can transfer any of options you like. I will be stitching this one with uh, palm tree and uh, all the rest objects. It's a complicated one. Uh, my patrons chose to choose, uh, chose <laughs> to stitch this version. So, and um, there is also, um, smaller version with uh, mango only and flowers and leaves and there is also version with um, flamingo in love like this so it's up to you you can stitch uh, any of those versions you like the most i will be stitching in this pattern every object it it also here so um you will be like all set and before stitching I will use two fabrics the main fabric and the fabric on the back which I will use as a stabilizer but uh, I, I guess I will be stitching with only one fabric uh, this time because it's cotton fabric and it will sit perfectly in my hoop but if you are going to be stitching uh, using one of those fabrics is it's gabardine and it's a little bit silky and it, without uh, cotton uh, it's not will be like um, sitting tight in the hoop I hope you hear me well. 
let me know. Um, I guess everything is all right, so we can uh, we can probably start. And I, before I start, I would like you to show uh, the design, which colors we will use. It's going, as I said, it's going to be 22 colors. And I'm working on the design on, um, on Procreate. And this is how it's gonna look like. So we are going to use four colors of pink, four flamingo and three or four colors for flower. Hi everyone who joined. And there are going to be different tropical leaves and flowers as well. A lot of colors, a lot of blending. I'm going to be using long and short stitching for this. And this leaf is a simple one, so I will start from this one today and I will stitch uh, this leaf. And all the rest objects I will be stitching day by day. Um, and there probably will be about uh, 7 or 8 live streams for this. So this is how it looks like. And um, the reason why I, um, I'm working on Procreate and because I would like to learn new, new stuff and uh, this one is more professional one. And uh, I also like that I can, I can record video here. So uh, time lapse replay is automatically uh, done so <laughs> and we I can watch all the process with you uh, and share with you how I work it on this pattern and it I guess it can be really interesting uh, to see how I do all the parts of my uh, pattern here so you can see Maybe I can replay it. Maybe I can move. See, I tried to move this image from other application and it doesn't allow me to make transparent, uh, transparent images. So I had to work on it to make it uh, perfect. So I will work on this video process and um, I will make a video about how I made this uh, pattern. Yeah, it's always good to upgrade your skills. So I uh, learned something new. Yesterday I was watching uh, video tutorials about Procreate a uh, whole day. I was uh, learning about all the features it has and I really like it. I will be making my um, next pattern in this program. So before stitching, I would like to show you how I bend my hoop. Uh, why I do it, it's for fabric tension. Um, I have just um, a piece of uh, cotton fabric and I cut it to make ribbon, like ribbons or something like that. Just cut it and make uh, ribbons and you can also uh, use a real ribbon like this which is silky but uh, the other other side of it is not really silk silky so you can uh, bend with this ribbon as well And you can find different kind of cotton ribbons on the shop and uh, use the ready one. But I had a cotton and I can use it. It's it's gonna be a little bit fluffy, 
after I will be working on it but I don't care it's in the hoop and nobody will see it I just needed to make my fabric stable when I'm stitching so I'm binding and this is uh, one of the best ways how to make your fabric uh, tight so this is how I do So as you can see I try to bind and overlap the fabric this way I do it with the hoops which I'm going to work with so um, for framing I can use another cheaper maybe hoop and I will not bend it but um, for hoop which I will be working with I will definitely do it so here I need to cut this fabric and I will just stitch it So I use um, just the usual sewing threads and I will stitch it to fix it <coughs> in one place. So. So how are you doing guys? How is your summer? It's still warm here and uh, I hope to go to the sea a few more times to relax and enjoy the last summer days. Okay, I'm good and I will make one hidden long stitch here and I can cut this thread. So I'm ready for stitching. So uh, as I'm stitching on cotton, I will use only one layer of fabric. I need to make sure that it's tight. Pattern for transferring is already posted on Patreon and there is also a color palette I made and I'm working on the color map but um, I'm going to be making progress pictures for most complicated parts uh, and turn into instructions for this pattern. So I go around and make sure I have my fabric really tight. So that it's not going to be moving around when I will be stitching. Okay, so it's ready. And for this teeny leaf I will be using those two colors this uh, darker one will use uh, for the stem and this one for the leaves Okay, the 
fabric is fixed. And which materials you will need? You will need fabric. And uh, which kind of fabric? I have an article on my Patreon about all the kind of fabrics you can use for embroidery. You will need embroidery needles. I like DMC 39 and I will be using uh, this needle or this needle, the smaller one, because I will be using only two and one strand of floss basically because I'm gonna implement a lot of uh, long and short shading and um, yeah there are a lot of details and uh, small details so I will be basically use one or two strands and you will need embroidery threads I have already prepared in my color palette it looks like this all the colors you need it also it's on patreon and it's going to be on my pattern details okay so i will pick one of the needles i already in use and i will start from the stem um, from the stems i will be i will use stem stitch So I'm using two strands of floss and there is a loop because I binded, um, I, I put the ends together and as a result I have a loop on one side. So I can start from this loop, I can start right from the front if you want because uh, my hoop is already in hoop stand and I don't want to take it off so I just go through the loop and go to the same place where I come up and this loop appears on the back side okay let me zoom in so you will see the details Okay, so stamp stitch is, don't take, it's a simple stitch and here is how you can do it. I keep um, the floss on one side uh, using my left hand so All the stitches goes into one direction. You just can make one long stitch and come up in the middle. See, I even made my nails with flamingos. Isn't it cute? You can ask me questions while I'm, uh, while I'm stitching. Embroidery takes time, so... Okay, so this is the last stitch and I will come up here and I will 
show you how to finish the thread in the end of this video. Currently I'm switching to another color. It's this one. Um, embroidery threads usually comes with six strand and each time I'm stitching I'm separating the threads this way one by one and I let them to unwind so I have then then I put if I need two strands I put the ends together and on other side I have a loop so I can start with the loop instead of making knot I usually don't like to make knots but Sometimes I have no choice, especially when I'm doing um, some French knots which are far away from the, my other stitches. So I make French, uh, I make knots to start my thread. And if I have only one strand of floss and I need to start my thread, I use another method. For these leaves, I will use satin stitch. It's also simple stitch, you just make stitches close to each other and fill in order to fill this area. If the area is too big, I would recommend to, to do another stitch if you will if you need to fill some let's say big area with only one color, you can use stamp stitch to fill it. I would use a stamp stitch for other projects to fill uh, big areas um, and probably there are videos on Patreon so you can uh, take a look on them or I will show you um, this time when I will be stitching this pattern there are going to be places where I will fill them with stamp stitch so you can stitch them this way this is just a palm tree leaf or you can go um, let's try another method how we can stitch it. You can make like this. Just try and see which method you would like the most. I think this one is much better, so I will go with this one for the rest leaves. The same thing I will do for palm tree leaves. So I will finish this thread and it's going to be enough for this 
part and we will probably move to the other objects. Okay, I will clean it later. So for this we we know what to do now, right? And I would like to show you how I will stitch the palm tree. So I will start from the top and I will be moving down. I'm gonna use two colors. There are three shades of brown and the lightest one I will use for coconuts and those two I'm gonna use for um, the tree. This is for background and this is for details on the top. So let's start from the ground color. Um, by the way, if you are going to be stitching uh, with my kit, uh, these are colors for gamma threads. And this one is for coconuts. And those two colors I was stitching. So this color is gamma for the stem. And this is color for gamma for the leaves. So I will cut my thread and I pick one. I will be stu stitching using two strands, but I'm separating one strand and I put it together as usual. As usual. Sorry. And I'm gonna fill the background using stem stitch. And I'm going to be moving from the top to the bottom, to the, from the top to the down. And my stitches directions are going to be this way. You can also use um, long and short stitch, but I think this one is more economical, so you don't waste a lot of thread. You need to watch uh, out and see if your thread is twisted and unwinded all the time, so your stitches will lay down flat properly. Uh, for stitching the grounds you can make long stitches. but not longer as one centimeter, like this, because when your stitches are long, it will make, like uh, when you release your fabric uh, from the hoop, 
um, your stitches uh, if you have a long long stitches they are going to be a little bit distorted and uh, they will uh, not in the same shape as it was hooped before so so uh, I'm going to be like going back but this time I will keep my thread in a different on a different side because I go in a different direction and I want my stitches to be like um, like this like not uh, crossing each other you know in the same direction because when you do stamp stitch it creates an effect of the rope and when you will stitch two rows together it will look like um, and you will not change the direction of your stitches it's gonna look like um, like a chain stitch or something like that but I need my stitches to be like a like satin stitch. So this is how you fill big areas with stamp stitch. Let me know if you tried this method and if you like it or not. I know many embroidery artists use this way. And uh, I wouldn't guess about it if I wouldn't watch their videos because um, when it's done it really looks like it's some long and short stitch or something like that. So I wouldn't even know. I will start one more thread. I want to fill this area so it can be a little bit boring but I just want to show you how it's gonna look like as finished result when I will add some details. So I'm filling on only the top part, but if I would stitch it just uh, for myself, I feel uh, I would move to the very to the down to the bottom, and only then uh, I would come back. So I just uh, chose. Um, the smaller area so I could finish it faster
if you have some gaps and you see that you need to add some stitches you, you were have you can uh, go back and fill those places it's totally okay Using this stitch uh, gives you more economical way of pasting your thread because most of the thread is on the front side and on the back side there are just few stitches which looks similar to back stitch something like that You can also use some different stitches like chain stitch. Did you see Chinese embroidery or Japanese? Yeah, it's Japan. Um, they use um, basically, uh, in most of cases, they use chain stitch and it's it looks so cute. If you're watching this video and as a replay you can uh, skip this part and jump to the part which is more interesting when we are finishing this boundary but this is a live stream and I can't speed up so it is a real life okay so I need one more thread and I guess this is the last one, so I will finish it soon. Hi, Melly. So as you can see it gives you a satin stitch effect or long and short. And it's actually a simple way to fill big areas with a solid color. If 
you see that the area is expanding so this is a little bit wider and this is a place is smaller so you can uh, add additional rows between Something like that. So I will add a shorter row and I will add it here in the middle and I will go back here and start a new one. And as you can see, this is fully, this part is fully filled, so I will jump here and add one more row. So I'm done with this color here. I will continue stitching uh, to fill everything which is left today later. And now I would like you to show the way how I will complete this part. I'm switching to the darkest brown color. And I'm using one strand and and to have two strands I'm just putting together. So I will be stitching these two strands again. And I will be doing this. I will start from the back with the loop so I have a loop on the back side and I go through it so this is how I start my thread and I will be doing stitches in this direction on top of the, all the rest stitches like this it 
if you are not sure where to put your needle you can lay um, the floss down and then put your needle into the place you like it and then I will do the same but in different direction like this which will create an effect of palm tree How do you like it? I like it. It's it really gives me what I expected to get. This is so cool the texture. If you can see I really like it and I don't know should I make outline or not what do you guys think should I make outlining let's try if I will not like it I will remove it so uh, for outlining I think it's going to be one strand enough going to be split stitch so it's something like back stitch but it's better than back stitch for outlining I'm splitting a little bit my previous stitch so it creates a solid line what do you guys think yeah it looks nice even without outlining and it also look like looks <laughs> nice without with it I think it's better with it because um, it creates a sharp edge and a little bit of contrast I don't know so I will I will do I will do outlining but it depends on you if you are stitching and you think it's not needed here so you just don't do it looks nice I like it and let's stitch 
coconuts today as well. I'm gonna use the lightest color, this is one, this is Gamma and this is DMC. And I'm thinking which stitch to use. Um, I would make outlining and then fill it with satin stitch or coconuts are usually fluffy so maybe maybe french nuts what do you think french nuts or satin stitch Hmm, that's a good question. So what do you say guys? French nuts or satin stitch? I think satin stitch. Somebody wants French nut, somebody wants satin stitch. I don't know, guys. Okay, maybe let's try French nuts. If we will not like it, we can always undo them, right? Okay, so wrapping two times, maybe it's too much. Let's do one time wrapping. So it will create a smaller French nuts and oh my god. No. We will cut it out. It's okay, it sometimes happens. No need to, to cry. So we will undo our stitches and we will start again. It's just a learning process. Okay, French nuts. Oops. Okay, I will do French nuts with two strands and wrap in one time. So to make them perfect, I need to keep my thread and help my le with my left hand. And it's also good if you have a hoop stand. So you will have both hands free. When I don't use hoop stand, I usually put my work on the desk and use my two hands. Because I need left hand to keep my thread this way while I'm going through the French nuts and when I'm almost done I'm I let the thread go yeah it gives a lot of dimension and textures 
so it's really so pleasant to touch and look at it. And you need to be careful when you do French knots and you try to make to create the shape of the object you want. See, I have this French knot which is a little bit outside of the area I need, so I can fix it by moving it a little bit to the left and I go through it one more time with the chain stitch. So I just say come here, you need to be there and not there. And when you make a little French knots you can create the border you like there are artists who stitch using only French knots and when they use really teeny French knots they probably use only one strand of floss and they can create really realistic pictures Just imagine how many French knots you would need to <laughs> to steal this to stitch uh, this whole picture. Uh, this is insane, but it worth it in the aim of art. So you can try it. Uh, you just fill in the the shapes and areas like pixels, pixel by pixel using French knots. So I decided to go and create the shape of it and then I will fill all the rest area inside using French knots. So currently I'm carefully making small French knots close to each other to create a rounded shape I want. And yeah, I think I will like it and I will leave it as it is. So it, it really gives me feeling that it's a, it looks like a real coconut. One more teeny French knots and the shape is ready. See, it's possible. So now I just feel everything which is inside. Let's try to make um, to wrap two times to make probably a little bit bigger French knots and feel it faster or you can continue using the same size of French knots, the smallest one. I think I will go with the small side because um, it can look different from the French knots outside so we need it to be consistent so I will use one wrapping one time.
so embroidery is is freedom for you to choose uh, which stitch you will you will use mm. I usually imagine how it's gonna look like so for me it's not hard to choose which stitch I will use but if you are unsure you can try just uh, just try a different stitch if you think it can look interesting and realistic just try it and if it doesn't work it's okay you can just uh, cut it and do it one more time but uh, when you cut the thread be careful to not damage the fabric so you can stitch again and so you will not make holes okay Okay, so I will need to start a new thread because it's not comfortable to stitch when you have short thread, especially when you do French knots. So make sure you use long enough thread, but uh, also don't use a uh, too long thread because it will cause some unnecessary unnecessary knots that you can <laughs> be unhappy with so so I start my thread from the top using my loop I just make a random stitch because I know I will cover it with French knots anyway, so that is okay. I usually use French knots to make uh, to fill the middle of the flowers. You can also make teeny flowers with French knots only. And with French notes, uh, you can also, if you see some ha gaps between them, you can always go back to this place and, and add one more or two French notes, smaller one to fill it. Okay, so this is the last French knot and it's done. Uh, it's so pleasant to touch, it gives different textures, uh, I think it's gonna look great. So I will leave it as it is and French nuts for coconuts. Oh, I 
finger. <laughs> so pleasant to touch. Okay, I think for today it's enough and I'm gonna go and stitch the palm tree and this leaf. So leaves here and they are they made the same way as this leaf here. You can also use instead of stem stitch you can use chain stitch to make some interesting texture for your leaves. Try it if you like. So um French knots look great. Yeah, thank you so much. Because um, they are just teeny one and if I did big French knots uh, it wouldn't look great. But the small one there, yeah, they look great in this case. So, okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you would like to stitch this pattern with me, and if you would like to see all the rest video tutorials, which I will make, um, I will be making them day by day, because it's so, so this, this month is so short and the summer ends so quickly. Um, and this is a quite big project, so I will do fr uh, live streams uh, sometimes every day, sometimes uh, skipping one day so uh, I will see how I feel about it so um, if you want to stitch it with me you can join me on patreon and you will have access to the pattern and you can also subscribe for monthly kit if you want sorry I had to restart my live stream something went wrong I have sometimes not good really good quality of internet so <clears throat> so as I said this pattern and kit currently available on patreon I have a interesting uh, patreon program when we stitch a new pattern every month and my patrons usually help me to choose which topic we will go next time so um, it's really interesting, you, you need to join and there are also a lot of educational content, uh, my articles and all the videos I make, uh, especially for Patreon, they are all there, there are about 35 videos like this, so we, you will definitely learn a lot. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stitch all this. Part and I will back to you probably tomorrow or next day after tomorrow. I will make a post on Pinterest. Uh, oh, sorry, on uh, on Patreon, so you will know it. Thank you so much, guys. See you tomorrow or on Friday. Bye, guys. <laughs>